Hello everyone, this is John Galt speaking, back with another video for how you use Project MoCat. The uh, template will be available soon, so I'm getting a head start on making these videos showing people exactly how you use this template. Uh, for inquiries about this template, uh, you guys will have to contact MoCap online, Modus Digital. Uh, the links for their website is in the description of all these videos that pertain to their product. Okay? So, this video here, I would like to demonstrate and go over the caveats involved with packaging the project for uh, a playable EXE demo that you can play via Steam. Okay? So... This is probably something similar to what you guys are going to be getting, which will be a zip file that contains the project and all the project files. Uh, this will be what you guys buy, okay? Uh, so step one would be to extract the files, right? So I'm going to go ahead and extract these into uh, my documents, Unreal Projects, okay? And we're going to we're gonna go through this process here so that... Um, you guys will fully be aware and know how to package this for a distributable uh, EXE file uh, that you know you can't people can't get the contents out of it. You'll it's it's a it's a baked product, right? Just like a real just just like a real game, okay? So I guess maybe what I would like to point out at the onset of this is that you guys have to have Visual Studio. Okay, you cannot package projects that use Steam without Visual Studio. Well, I don't think you can package any project without it. But uh, just to give you guys a heads up, here's here's what I'm talking about. So if you type in Visual Studio Community 2015 download. Okay, so Visual Studio Community 2015 download. Um, wow, they've changed this, so maybe you can't get it. I know they changed to 2017, uh, but I still just use 2015, okay? I think, I think that's what I got installed. You can download old versions of Visual Studio and other software through a subscription. Well, that's, that's totally not what I'm looking for, uh. You guys might have to use 2017. I haven't upgraded yet, so I don't know. Maybe I do have it, and I just don't realize it. So maybe it's this one here. Free. Here we go. Yeah. So this is probably what I have. Um, you guys will have to download this, and for whatever reason, by default, I don't think it gives you the C++ tool so when you download this you need to make sure that you do a custom installation and you need to make sure that the box that contains the C++ stuff is ticked okay uh, you don't have to have the other stuff really just make sure that you have the C++ box in the downloads I've already got this so I'm not going to download it and once again too I'm not sure if I'm using 2015 still or if I have 2017, but either one of these should work as long as you make sure to tell it that you need the C++ aspects of this Visual Studio. Okay? Alright, so that's first off. Uh, and then, of course, you would extract your project to wherever you want it, desktop, whatever. Uh, and then you open up, I'm going to go ahead and open up this project and we'll run through the entire packaging process here. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And there's a couple settings that you have to uh, make sure that you have checked and everything before you actually run this process. So bear with me here, guys. It's late. It's like... 8 13 a.m. and I still haven't been to sleep yet so I'm dragging here but I've got to get some of these videos done because I don't want to spend you know four days six hours a day making these damn streams 
So we did one. The first in the series was a map making thing. Now this is going to show you, after you guys create your cool map, how you can package this project to allow others to play your cool map. So this is my cool map. Right, so this is the one that I created that this template's likely going to come with, uh, plus or minus some uh, stuff, okay? So, step one is that you need to go to settings here, hit this little drop down beside settings, go to project settings, and under maps and modes, this is extremely important, guys, so pay attention here. Uh... Your default editor startup map can be whatever map you want it to be, right? The important part of this is that the game default map has to be the MP underscore main menu, right? So you need to make sure that you set that to your main menu. Otherwise, the menu don't come up when you launch the game. Very important, okay? Uh, another thing is that I have a different renderer set in here because of a crashing issue that I have. It's not nothing to do with this project. It's, it's due to my video card. Okay, so until they get that crashing issue fixed, I have to use uh, forward shading, right? So you might want to turn that off, right? And it's going to tell you that you need to restart the editor to apply the new settings. So I'm going to go ahead and do the quick restart here. And really, guys, forward shading is really used for VR, <laughs> oddly enough. Uh, it doesn't really make a huge difference if you package it with it, other than the fact that some textures don't show up right. Uh, so, you know, maybe by the time this project is available, I'll have that set to default so you won't have to do that forward, uncheck forward rendering. But just keep that in mind and check it, okay? So we're going to go back to project settings. So under maps and modes, we told it that the game default map is MP underscore main menu, okay? Uh, I also went underneath rendering, and I made sure that I turned off use forward renderer, wherever the, wherever the crap that is. It's in here somewhere. Uh, right here forward shading I turned that off so make sure that's off otherwise your textures might look a little funky co Medina but once again I'll try to leave that off from you know by the time this project launches you may not have to mess with that I'll have it off by default okay now the next thing that I'd like for you guys to do is to go to packaging and you're likely gonna have this set to development right um, and you do not want to package your EXE in this. You, you don't, right? Because if you do package it this way, chances are that your assets are going to get jacked out of this. Uh, you know, there's a whole set of reasons why you don't do it this way, right? This is for development. You don't want this to be the project that people have access to. So... You can go in here and set this to shipping that way, or you can leave it on development, and if you check full rebuild and full distribution, you're going to see that it automatically changes it to shipping, right? And you're also going to want to make sure that use pack file is checked, right? This is what locks your project down into a cooked version, which makes it where assets can't get thefted out of this. To my knowledge, that's what that means. Um, I generally don't do any of this blueprint nativ nativization. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this thing not running good, so I don't see the point in nativizing any of the uh, current blueprints that are in here. However, you guys might want to research that. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but you can look at UE4's documentation to find out exactly what all that means. Um TLDR, you can select specific blueprints and it will convert them to native code, which theoretically is supposed to increase performance, right? But once again, I haven't had to use that and I, I'm not gonna. I don't use things that I don't have to. Okay, so now that we have all that done, uh, you simply go up here to File and you go to Package Project 
you go to Windows, and you go to 64-bit, and you click this button. You tell it where you want it to go, right? And I'm just going to put this on my desktop and hit OK. And then we're going to sit here and have a chit-chat about, uh, you know, whatever. So currently what's happening here is it's packaging this project into a executable file that people that do not even have the uh, Unreal Engine or, nor Launcher install can run this, okay? And you can, uh, you know, if you're curious, you can hit show output log here and it's going to be running through, uh, you know, all the things that it's doing, <laughs> which is a chit ton, uh, by the way. And, you know, generally this don't take a whole heck of a long time, but I want to run through this process with you guys so that you can see this being done in real time, right? Because it matters. How do I package my project? Why does this not work? Why am I getting a million errors? This game sucks. This template's bad. Everybody should die in a ditch, right? If you follow these instructions, guys, it will work, Okay. The biggest problem I've found with people trying to package projects and it failing is simply because they, they install Visual Studio, but they don't check to make sure that they check the box that specifically says C++, right? And they're missing it. So naturally, when it tries to package and it does not have those things, it ain't going to work, okay? So that's important. Don't omit that part. Make sure that you have that. And then you follow those, uh, you know, few minor instructions and caveats at the beginning of this, and everything should work hunky-dory, okay? And then we'll talk a little bit about, uh, I'm going to do another live stream where we play the playable demo, right? And I'll show you guys all the little caveats about that. Uh, but really, uh, this is really just to package it and demonstrate that it does work. And we'll launch the EXE and... Uh, we might host up a game on LAN, right? Um, and I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do Steam as well, but I'll do a video specifically about playing the playable demo. We probably won't go through that, uh, all that whole process in this video. And once again, to inquire about the availability of this project, you guys will have to contact MoCap online. Uh, I don't know how much they're going to charge for this. I have no idea. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be available. I'm not quite finished yet, so it may be a minute yet. Okay, so you can see I got my sound effect and my little, hey, packages is complete. Woohoo! We just won the whole entire internet. Okay? So now that that's all over and done with, we can quite literally close down the project at this point. And what it will do is it will create you this snazzy little folder here called Windows No Editor. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this to test underscore project mocap underscore v01. Uh, damn. So I already have it on here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, change it to, well, I, no, I want to keep that one because, yeah, reasons. So this is going to be test project mocap underscore v02. Hey, we got a new version. No, it's not. It's the same thing. It's just that this is the one that I'm going to be using to test with uh, and do a video later. So I don't want to confuse the two. Okay, so there it is. Now, here's another final caveat uh, to this. So, you see this little text file here that I've got called Steam App ID? You guys have to have that. And it has to be included in your test project. Now, all this is, guys, is a freaking notepad document that if you open up, all it has in it is 480. Okay? So, let me show you guys how to make this. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a number 2 at the end of this. So that I can differentiate. So quite literally, for whatever reason, this is missing from a packaged shipping uh, version. Right now, the development version, you don't have to do this step for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Uh, but for a shipping 
version, you do have to do this step. So pay attention here. So I'm simply going to open up Notepad, and I'm going to type 480 in it. Just literally 480. Then I'm going to say File, Save As, and we're going to call this uh, all lowercase Steam underscore A-P-P-I-D. And we're going to say save. Right? So, guys, don't send me hate mail. Make sure you freaking name it exactly like that. And inside it, it only contains 480. Okay? Which is the default port that UE4 or uh, Steam provides for developers to test their Steam games. Okay? It's the default uh, app ID. But you have to create this text document for a shipping version. Okay? Now, at this point, you can keep that forevermore. Right? You'll never need to remake that again if you keep it. So, to include that into your project, all you have to do is simply right-click this thing and say copy. And let me show you where this goes. So, you open up your project. You go into the name of your game, Project MoCap in this instance. You go into the binaries, and then you go into the Win64 or 32, whatever you package it for. And inside here, you're going to have this, which has got shipping at the end of it. You right-click and simply paste that text document in here, that notepad. Okay? Now, at this point, you can right-click this thing and say, Send to Compressed Zip Folder, and it will create you a zip version of your project. Okay, and this will take just a split second of a dog's tail here, shaking of a dog's tail. Oh, I'm thirsting to death. These videos are killing me, guys. I burnt the midnight oil. So much to do, so little time. And once again, this ain't quite ready yet, right? So it's still going to be uh, at least a week or two yet before I'm complete. And then I have no idea how long it'll be before they make it available after that. I'm just getting a head start here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and now delete that. And here's what you will give to your pals to test out your awesome map that you created in Project MoCap. Okay? So, at this point, you simply right-click and say Extract Files. You can put this wherever you want to. I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Say Extract here. And this is what your friends will do to test this out. They'll have to extract it. Don't freaking see me hate mail. It don't work. You have to extract it out of the zip file. It will not run if you simply open this thing and go in here and try to do this. Okay? Don't send me freaking hate mail. Extract it, people. All right, so now we have that folder that we zipped up. And inside here, uh, you have your uh, EXE, right? So you just double-click this thing and watch what happens. Hey, look at that. All right? Now, if you do not have Steam running, regardless of it saying Steam enabled or disabled, it's still going to use LAN if you don't have your Steam overlay running in the background. Okay, so I'm going to hit host game, and it's going to tell you, do you want to allow access? Yes, you want to allow access. Don't send me hate mail. It don't work. Well, it's because your firewall is blocking it, idiot. <laughs> right? Allow access. So here's what you will have, right? So I'm hosting a game here, and uh, this is the little map that this is likely going to come with. Nothing spectacular, right? It's a template. It's a demo. And uh, we talked about this in another video. You got the NPCs hanging out that you can kill. Uh, and then anybody that joins you via LAN at this point, because we're not on Steam, uh, they'll be in here and their name tags will show above their name and they'll show in the upper left-hand corner that they're on your map. So you just got to go run around, find them, and kill them. All right? And that's really all it is. Oh, uh, arena PvP, you just run around and kill the crap out of each other. And in the meantime, oh, by the way, 
If you get bored, you can shoot the dummies, and they'll die and respawn, right? Uh, so there you have it. That's that. And to demonstrate this in a single-player LAN environment, I can launch another version of this, right? And this time around, instead of hosting game, I'm going to say server list. And it will search. And once again, since Steam is not running, it should find my LAN game, which is right here. So you click it and you join, right? Now here I am. Now I can go find myself. When I think about you, I find myself. So there I am, right? So there's me and there's me, right? And we're on two completely uh, different instances here. So if I move this over a little bit, uh, you can see that here I am. I'm playing with myself on live stream. Imagine that. Uh, so this is a way that you can test out your replication and you know all that cool stuff But once again at this point, this is a package project, right? And you guys are free to play this thing you can download it They'll make it available for free as far as I know you're gonna be able to play this for free uh, To test out what this template is going to come with as well as what the animations look like in the game in the engine as well as Mr. Modus man here uh, you know, demonstrating some of the animations from some of their other uh, animation packs, okay? So this is just a cool little way as an ad advertisement for their uh, product, right? And, um, yeah, once again, I'm not going to go through all the replication and stuff, but hey, it works. Believe me. I've, I've tested this. It works. Even the turning places replicate, even though they're not. These are still just placeholder. <laughs> but they're supposed to be ready soon <clears throat> ish there's a lot of still placeholder animations in here but they'll they'll be replaced by the time this is ready to ship I would imagine okay um and then you can press M and it'll bring up your snazzy little quit button right so poop I'm gone right so I just killed the whole thing the server quits and everybody else gets the boot too that's the way it works um so, there you have it. Now, once again, Steam's a little different. And I would like to do a video specifically about Steam, how you use it on Steam. But um, I can go ahead and give you guys a little demonstration here. So, how this is going to work is, first, you guys are going to have to make sure that you have Steam overlay running in the background. right? That's step one. Okay, go. Right? So you got to have this thing going in the background just like with every other Steam game. Okay? Now, another caveat here that I want to mention is, pay attention here, guys. Don't send me hate mail. Um, you guys are likely going to have to make sure that your download regions are set close to each other, if not the same location. So how you do that is you right-click your little Steam icon down here and go to Settings. And then in the download section here, this download region server, these need to be the same if not close, right? If, if, if you can't find each other's server, this is likely the reason why, right? Um, somebody in Zimbabwe is not going to be able to hook up and play with somebody in Atlanta, right? It's, it'll just lag. So these need to kind of be close. Now that doesn't mean that somebody that's using Atlanta can't play with somebody in Dallas. It just simply means that if you host a game and the, the, your friends are saying, I can't find your server, this thing's broke, everything sucks, this whole game sucks. Make sure that these are the same, right? And if it don't work then, then you can send me hate mail, okay? But until then, don't send me hate mail. So make sure that's the same. Okay, and it'll say when you click OK, it'll tell you if you change it. Hey, you got to restart Steam. Freaking restart Steam. Okay, if it tells you to restart it, restart it. Okay, so now we're going to do this kind of the Steam way. Now, I can't play with myself on Steam, right? You only get one Steam ID, and you can't test that unless somebody else tests it with you that has a Steam account, right? I can't play with myself on Steam. Don't work that way. So, you'll launch Project MoCap, same as before. Um, 
Steam enabled, if that's set to LAN and Steam is enabled, you see it come up accessing the Steam community here. Even if LAN's enabled, I'm pretty sure that I've got this set to default to whatever you have running. So this button can likely be removed is I guess what I'm getting at. So if you have Steam running and you're trying to play on LAN, it's not going to let you. It's going to use Steam. If you turn Steam off and you try to play on Steam, it's going to make you play via LAN. Right, so it's kind of like an, it's kind of idiot proof, right? So even if you don't have this set to land and you have Steam running, it'll play on Steam and vice versa, okay? Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say host game, right? Now, at this point right here, I have a server running hosted on my computer, which means anybody else that has this version of this EXE file should be able to hit server list and find my server at that point, okay? And uh, they'll join just as, <clears throat> just the same as I said, right? So they'll hook up and their name will show up in the upper left-hand corner. Plus, you can walk up to them in game and they'll have a name tag. Their name tag will be over their head. And then you can run around and PvP each other on Steam, okay? Now, currently, this is set to hold eight players. That may or may not change. I may bump that down to not be eight. It may be four. It may be two, right? Um, personal computers are not really meant to, you know, host a game like this with a ton of people on it, right? So if I have people telling me during the final days of testing of this, oh, man, I'm lagging like crap, and there's eight people on it, it's going to get bumped down. Right, because I don't want people sending me hate mail or modus hate mail. Oh, this is the laggingest piece of crap I've ever played. Yeah, you're running on a potato trying to host a UE4 game on a potato computer with an Intel integrated graphics card with eight people. Yes, it's going to suck. <laughs> okay? There ain't no getting around that. So... You know, if I start getting a lot of that uh, mentioned to me, I will bump this down. And if I have to, it'll just be you and another person, right? I'm not going to deal with uh, hate mail and, uh, you know, everybody complaining that this thing lags like hell when it's their hardware, the reason why, okay? I'm not going to deal with that. And if I have to, I'll bump it down to two freaking people, okay? But uh, anyway, that's really it, right? So we took the project. We went through the process of setting everything the way that it needs to be set. We packaged out the executable file. We added the Steam text notepad to this, and we connected successfully via LAN, running two instances on the same computer. I have a Steam server running, so theoretically anyone that had this version of this project at this point would be able to go to Steam, click Steam server in this project and it should show my server and they should pop be able to pop right in here and we could run around and do all these cool things okay so with that i'm going to go ahead and kill this quick game and once again it's not completely done yet but i'm really really close i mean like really really close to this being completed uh so this is why you package it in a shipping version if you go into the engine and you go in here and you go to like content look it's got them all made up into proprietary encrypted files, uh, you know, so your stuff don't get stole, right? So they can't come in here and rip out your animations and all that stuff, okay? So that's the reason why you do that. And it also includes some stuff that they may need to run it, like uh, in the extras, there's a redistributable in here, pre-rec pre -rec setup. It'll, it'll run that, more than likely, if they need it, automatically, okay? And, uh, yeah, that should be that. So, there you have it. And there it is, and that's that. And I'm sleepy, and I'm tired, so that's a wrap, Jack. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And uh, the next test, uh, the next video will likely be covering... Uh, the weapons creation system that's built in this template, right? So 
people who purchase this template, they're not only getting some AAA quality animations, they're also getting a bunch of third-person shooter mechanics that are replicated for multiplayer, right? This is a multiplayer project, guys. Everything I've done, I've done it and built it specifically for replication. It's meant to be multiplayer, okay? Um, so the next video will likely be uh, a full in-depth demonstration of actually playing with other players on Steam, right? I'm going to get some of my friends to hook up and join me, and we're going to play through uh, just a little gameplay of how this plays, right? Uh, I don't I don't know if I'm going to be going over the controls and all that stuff, but we're just going to kind of put together a little match, and we're going to run around and shoot the crap out of each other, okay? Uh, and then, of course, then later on, I'll start getting into the videos of the weapons creation tool. I might do it first. I don't know yet. It just depends on how tired I am. Uh, that's going to be a pretty long video because there's a lot to cover uh, because there's a lot of freaking mechanics in this weapon system, okay? And in a shooter game particularly, the freaking weapon mechanics are the most major piece of the whole entire thing, right? So there's a lot to cover in it. But hopefully I can squeeze it out in an hour and a half and it'll make sense and everybody will be on the same page and know exactly how you use it and everything okay so with that uh i appreciate anyone who caught this live which is probably nobody this is the second video i've done uh overnight here um i appreciate anyone who catches this live or anyone who happens to catch this after the fact guys go join my patreon page i have lots of in-depth tutorials on a lot of how a lot of these mechanics were created from scratch not all of them but a lot of, you know, how the weapon system works and how it all replicates and all that stuff. For the $10 tier Patreons, there's about, oh, I don't know, 22, 24 hour plus videos of me creating a lot of these shooter mechanics. So guys, go join my Patreon. Help me out. If you guys enjoy these videos and you want to learn something about this engine, that's the place to be. Um, I go in depth about how these mechanics were created and... Yeah, check it out. So with that, I'm going to end the video here. This is John Galt, and we will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, fellas.